Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Wilhelm and this is my best friend Dexter here and welcome to our channel. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon, and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And for our returning friends, thank you again for joining us. Today I wanted to share with you the results of Dexter's cardiology visit. So as you may or may not know, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is very prone to developing heart disease, particularly MVD. And unfortunately, this is a occurrence for most of our Cavalier friends. In the description below, I'll actually have an article that I did with Dexter's cardiologist on what you need to know about MVD and how often you should be evaluating your dogs. And for most of us that have Cavaliers, we like to do this with our cardiologist at least yearly and more frequently as they age or if they start to develop the disease. Once Dexter turned one, I started to take him to a cardiologist. This would ensure that we were keeping ahead of the game and knowing what his heart looked like. And each year, the cardiologist would either give us up, we're, we're still good, there's no d disease development, or as he started to get older, his heart did start to decline. Once Dexter was around three or four, his heart was starting to decline a little bit and he was starting to develop a little bit of MVD and so the cardiologist started to include yearly echograms. This would allow Dexter's cardiologist to get a better view of his heart and what was going on. And Dexter held stable until his last visit, and as you may know, he just turned 12, so it was right before his 12th birthday, probably about two weeks before his 12th birthday. And unfortunately, the cardiologist saw some leaky valves. So now, instead of every year, Dexter is actually going to go back every nine months, possibly more often, depending on what the vet sees. And this is so we can see how his MVD is progressing and if we need to change any action. And now Dexter is officially taking heart medications to help control his MVD. What I wanted to share with you today is actually the discussion Dexter's cardiologist had with me about his results. So what I did was I hit the record and I have a little audio clip. So we're going to go ahead and listen to that now. Hey, Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Dr. Mellon? Good, good. Mr. Dexter, he did change a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, not surprising. He's a Cavalier, right? So, um, what changed is that his valve itself, you can clearly see that it's degenerated a little bit more, weakened. And so now, um, we obviously just hear one murmur, but in fact, actually, he's got two leaks in that mitral valve. Um, and they're distinctly different leaks. They're just happening in different areas of the valve itself. So he has kind of two leaks that are going down through that valve. The significance of that is that um, his heart feels that as one leak. And so it, it, it's like that one plus this one equals the new size of the leak. So he does have a moderate sized leak in his valve at this point. And that then that, because that added a little bit of stress to his heart, we see both his left atrium and his left ventricle got bigger compared to his last visit. So there's a measurable difference now. He still is doing well. So I don't want to mislead you. He still is doing well. He's still very comfortable, still very happy. Doesn't look like he's about to go into congestive heart failure, but because his leak got bigger and his heart got bigger, now's the time for us to say, okay, let's start to engage you. Because up until now, all the medication he takes is for his, yeah. his you know, mind, his brain. Okay. Yes. So. Let's put him on Betmedin. That may be a drug you've heard of. Uh -huh. uh, how it's beneficial to Cavaliers, and we have a lot of research in Cavaliers, is that it enhances the power of strength and squeeze and contraction of the heart. So their heart actually contracts better, more efficiently. And by doing that, what you're really doing is you're saying, I'm going to maximize the output from his heart that goes forward out to his body to do fun things. And by enhancing that, I'm going to reduce the amount of blood that goes backwards through that valve, right? Because there's only a set amount of blood. So if I make this one be more, then this one automatically has to be less. Okay. So that's the game we play. We put him on that medication, enhance his pumping function, and that we know that when we do that and when we follow those dogs in drug studies, that those dogs feel better, they, have, they, they, they physically feel better, they have better stamina, they feel better day to day, and they live longer. 
-hmm. So what else do I need to do or watch or monitor or start to... Well, so what you just keep track of, you know, just keep track of in general, I think, is, you know, how's he feeling? Are you wanting to continue to eat well, feel well? No vomiting, no diarrhea. Um, minimal coughing, right? Everybody coughs. I cough, you cough, everybody coughs. A little cough here and there, we're not worried about. A new cough that sticks with him, that's not normal. That's not normal Dexter. So, so then where's that coming from? So we would be concerned about that. Um, in terms of any changes, I don't think you specifically have to change anything other than, you know, if his normal routine is an outside a lot playtime, you know. Um, then... Very slow, leisurely walks. Okay, perfect. <laughs> That's all he's ever really yeah, been able can, to do. He can have endless slow, leisurely okay. walks. Yes, yes. So, and the weather's changing, so it's, yeah, yeah. it's not so miserable anyway. So. Yeah, but like I said, I think that he's doing remarkably well. This is not the end of the world. This is not shocking or surprising. This is Dexter being a cavalier, okay. you know, just like he takes his other medications for his other cavalier issue. You know? So do you think I should stick with the dosing of the other medications, the other heart medications? That yeah, I don't think you need to change them, to tell you the truth. You know? And the other question is, and that he turns 12 next week, um, was do we do a dental or not? You know, do we put him under for a dental at 12 and heart? And yeah. And um, she said they're not, I mean, they're not great, but she said they're not, like, that's like again. scary, but... He never did well under anesthesia to begin with. Oh, he did he, not. Even when he was younger, he kind of came out slow, I thought. I'll let it go. Okay, that's kind yeah, of that's not good. terrible. Yeah. I'd probably let it go. Yeah. Yeah, especially since that past history, like you said, is yeah. Like, yeah, that was when he was young. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. a long time to get him out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe let it just. Yeah, let it pass. Yeah, I'll let one, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let him, let him be, let him do his thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate all your great care and oh, sure, sure. So, are we on track? If nothing changes, another year, or should we go? I said nine to twelve. I said nine to okay. twelve. So I did shorten it up a little Sounds bit. Good. <clears throat> yeah, and then obviously, if something comes up before, then just call. Okay. And you know, we have. So that's our diagnosis, and as you can see, Dexter's 12, so he's still doing pretty good, but we just want to be aware of what's going on, and I want to pay close attention to how he's feeling, continue with his regular calm, relaxing exercise, and don't overdo it for him. And that's actually been Dexter's style of activity over the last five years as his body's aged, as his SM's progressed, and now as his heart disease progressed. And although he looks quiet here, we're going to do some more videos next and we'll see my little spunky monkey in action. So again, I will put a link in the description about heart disease in Cavaliers and other breeds and what you need to be aware of. I'll also link up some other helpful tips and articles too. And more than likely, I'll write another article on Dexter's MVD and the progression and what we're doing to help keep Dexter comfortable and happy. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon. You'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And if you're a Cavalier family, do check out our private Facebook group. The link's below. And if you want to dive deeper into your dog's training, behavior, and care, you can even check out my private Patreon group. And that link's below too. So remember to pause and enjoy life. Life's too short. Bye-bye.